for November the 11th at Notre Dame. That is pretty positive. Just a moment ago, the seniors introduced for their final home game. The last senior, the leader, Tony Rice. And a great moment, Paul. And this is a very special moment here. The last home game, every home season, every senior being introduced. And boy, were they welcomed with a full standing, standing room ovation, was it? Notre Dame deferred after winning the toss, and so they will kick off to begin the game, and it's fielded by Michael Bowen at the 10 for SMU, and he is across the 25, and Michael Bowen, one of only three SMU players who played here in 1986, the last time these teams met, brought down at the 27. And there's the man around whom the SMU offense is being rebuilt. Freshman from San Antonio, Mike Romo. And already more than 2,000 yards. 10 touchdowns, 13 interceptions. He's six foot tall, weighs 185. And he's their gun. And already you can see, well, there's a cross up right off the bat as they run the football. And Kevin Love out of Houston is tackled by Chris Zorich and Andre Jones. There's the offensive line of SMU. Carroll Hard, Weisenbaker, the center. Rosales and Tree Giller on the right tackle spot. Backfield led by Mike Romo. Kevin Love will be the guy who runs the football if they do run it. They're going to run the run and shoot offense. Man in motion. They love to throw it. And Romo dropped the snap and never did pick it up. And it's finally covered by one of the Mustang linemen. Rosales. Oscar Rosales, who Forrest Gregg says is his best offensive lineman, and it fell on it. Yeah, the ball never got to Romo, the center. Matt Weisenbaker had the ball hit his leg. And so it'll be third and nine for SMU. At their 28, you see the three receivers, and now Wolf will go in motion and reverse himself. The four receivers in the pattern, and they try to throw a quick screen to the far side to Andy Bergfeld, but Todd Light was right in his jersey, the ball incomplete, and the Mustangs will be forced to punt. So three downs and out for SMU, and Casey Kleiss up quarterback is the Mustang punter and the Rocket is back deep for the Irish that ball hanging up and the Rocket's going to try to run it and he got through the first wave and almost got through the second wave and he's to the Notre Dame 48 where the Irish will start special teams going to be a problem for SMU because they just don't have the talent or the size Early in the game, Notre Dame takes over with no scores. We pause now for a regional. He is said often this week, he's not trying to insult anybody's intelligence, but he said, by nature, I worry. I pace a lot. I walk a lot. He's worried about SMU. And he's hoping, although he's awfully realistic and he understands the, the straits SMU is in, I think Lou is hoping that Notre Dame can score early, as they did last week and put the game into a comfort zone. Rice on first down is going to play fake and throw it up long for the Rocket, who's behind the defense, and he couldn't hang on. The ball was slightly underthrown, but still I think a ball that Ismail should have caught. We're having a little audio problem and getting Paul's headset fixed here, and so we'll talk about Ismail just kind of blowing right through the secondary, and this is one of the few times that Rice underthrows the ball. Basket catch that Ismail could not make. So it is second and ten for the Irish. And from the eye, Rice to run the option. And he keeps it. They drop the football. And SMU has it at the Notre Dame 49. Darren Harrington making his first start for SMU. One of the many freshmen recovered the fumble. Well, we told you they were starting 17 freshmen. Here comes the option down the right side. Now watch Harrington. Rice puffs up the football. He's hit from the secondary. One of the linebackers in there. And SMU recovers inside the 50. Well, the Mustangs get their second possession, and they have it in Notre Dame territory. 
Irish almost jumping. Romo with a quick pass out in the flat. This is Michael Bowen. And Todd Light runs him out of bounds at the 45. Michael Bowen, one of the three lettermen back for SMU, played a year at Georgia. And while SMU was out for two years, you look at the Irish defensive front five where Kowalkowski's played so well the last few weeks. That same defensive back that actually they're starting an extra defensive back in there, Rod Smith, starting off with the nickel defense today. Ted, because of uh, Mike Romo is going to throw the football a lot. Five men deep. Five defensive backs, and Romo's pass is juggled and caught right near the first down marker. That ball is caught by Jason Wolf from Birmingham, Michigan. Francisco on the hit. They're going to be just shy of the first down. Out of the run and shoot, one remaining back back there, and he gets out to protect on the left side. A little square out pattern. A quick square out to Jason Wolf, the freshman red shirt from Birmingham, Michigan. Hey, can your old pal Forrest Greg recruit this kid? Michigan and UCLA both wanted Jason Wolf. And he went to SMU. Surprised many. Now Romo trying to sneak it for the first down, and he's got it. Yep, didn't need to get much and looked like he got it. And so SMU has a first down just inside the 38-yard line of Notre Dame. You know, I think the coaching staff realized last week they really felt that they could shut out Navy defensively. But I think this week they think that SMU is going to put some points on the board. You know, the way this Romo looking at the films, uh, Lou Holt said he's very impressive. He's got a good arm. He's got a good command of the defense. In, in other words, he has a good feel for the passing offense. And Romo dumping it out. Look for a secondary man there and found him. Michael Bowen is to the 30-yard line. That's the one trait right there that we saw that Forrest Gregg said Mike Romo has just begun to show the last couple of games the ability to look for second and third receivers. There's Bowen. He's called their wide receiver. He's a junior from Richardson, Texas. Now, if Bowen would have made the cut off his right leg here, Ted, and took it upfield, he would have had the first down right here. Right there. Instead, he plants his left foot and he tries to go back, and Duan Francisco makes the stop short of the first down. But still a good play at second and two, and Romo, under some pressure there, throws it incomplete for Wolf. See, Wolf was open again, going against Francisco, but the quarterback had to hurry his throw, and the good defensive pressure caused that incompletion. Mike Romo was the first player to sign with SMU when Forrest Gregg took over as coach. The first player to sign a letter of intent after he had verbally committed to go to Rice. But he changed his mind after visiting SMU. And Zorich makes contact. He jumped over center. There must be something in Romo's cadence that the Irish have not heard before. Exactly. The quarterback can do a lot of magical things when he gets underneath that center. Offside. He changes defense. He changes the First height down. of his voice. That's exactly what caused it, Ted. You picked it up. Mike Romo there, emphasizing maybe a number a little bit louder than the previous one, drew Chris Zorich off. So through the penalties, SMU gets a first down at the Notre Dame 25. Romo wears a, a rather bulky brace on his left knee from a high school injury in his senior year that did scare off some of the major schools that have been courting him. Now being pressured, and he throws it underneath, and good pursuit by Francisco to make the hit on Jason Wall for a loss of two. That's a great defensive play by Francisco. I don't know if you picked it up or not, but there was a big offensive left tackle, Kyle Carroll, moving to his left side. He was supposed to pick Francisco off. He missed the block, and Francisco made a big play. If Carroll blocks Francisco, that big yardage. And it's a loss of two. No score four minutes into the game at SMU after a Notre Dame fumble at the Irish 27. Quick pass by Romo. That one is caught for a short game. Caught by Bowen. And Rod Smith on the coverage for the Irish. And the ball to the 21-yard line, where SMU will have third and six. The Mustangs start seven freshmen on offense. There's a junior Michael Bowen, a sophomore offensive right guard, a junior offensive right tackle, and the tight end, Gleber, is a senior for Richardson, Texas. So a very young football team. 
find their first key down here. Third and six at the Irish 21. A juggled snap and a quick pass, which is caught, but no gain, if not a loss. Caught by... That's caught by Mitchell Gleber, his first catch. But it is for, well, no gain at the 21, and SMU will bring the field goal team out. And you'll notice both the cornerbacks, Stan Smagala, Todd Light, uh, Juan Francisco, who's ever covering the flanker, are the split in. They play man-to-man -man and really cover him like a glove. They've done a good job of stop, stopping that little short, quick pass over the middle. Left-footed kicker Matt Lomanick, six out of nine in field goals this season. And he is just booted one. That will be wide. He left it out. So SMU unable to capitalize on the turnover. As junior Matt Lomanick missing from 39 yards. And so with 9.33 to go in the first quarter, Notre Dame dodging an early bullet. We have no score. We often see head coaches do that. Absolutely. Just talking to their assistants up in, up in the press box. But final decision is lose offensively on calling the plays. And right over center, Anthony Johnson. And he is out to the 20, almost 28-yard line. Look at that veteran Notre Dame offensive line. Been Three very, seniors there. They've been very fortunate that offensive line has started every football game. Notre Dame, very fortunate as far as injuries goes. There's your Frank Jacobs broke his ankle against Air Force. He's really the only casualty. Stan Smagala missed one game. Good running there. Waters running hard, cutting through, and gets a first down out to the 34. Chris Collins and Richie Butler out of the SMU defense on the tackle. There's the three-man defensive line. They just had to move Steve Bonatti into the nose tackle spot this week. He's an offensive lineman. The guy the Forrest Greg really likes there is Kerry Brabham, the free safety. A running back, all-state running back in Texas. And that's the player on the defense that Forrest Greg thinks may be a big-time player for him soon. He's number two in tackles as far as the Mustangs defense are concerned with it. 67. Best tackler on the squad is an inside linebacker, freshman red shirt from Cypress, Texas, Bill Kiley, number 42. Well, Tony Rice out across the 40. The SMU defense, though, just really, they're undersized. That's been their... And again, we've pointed out, they start 10 freshmen on defense. And so it isn't surprising. Of course, Greg is not. this hole. Uh, Waters on the cutback, spins to field. And another first down for the Irish. Waters is really starting to put some statistics behind his name. 87 carries coming in. He's averaging 6.5 yards. A pop, eight touchdowns. We take a look. Look at this big move here, a good spin move. Just couldn't hold his balance. That was Bill Colley on the stop. a good defensive move by Bill Colley up on the inside. Dean Brown trying to get that block, the senior from Canton. First down in midfield, and SMU showing a blitz. Rice keeps it, and he gets five yards before he is tackled on the play by Kerry Brabham. Again, out of the eye. The option down the right side. Rice decides to cut it back up. Good hit by Kerry Bradley. Rice just keeps racking up the rushing numbers. Rodney Culver is the fullback now for Notre Dame in front of Ricky Waters. Counter option. And Waters a tough catch there. And he gets to the 35-yard line and will have another first down. Just a matter of time. Completely outmanned up front as far as the offensive line at Notre Dame is concerned. Here we come. Counter option. He comes back. Line. He's got an option off of that linebacker. That was Chris Collins. He pitches it out to Ricky Waters and gets the first down easily. Waters averaging six and a half yards a rush as well as that good pass catching number this year. The transition to tailback has gone much better for Waters the last few weeks. Another option, and Rice with a later pitch, and Waters can turn the corner, go down the sideline, and go in. Touchdown, Irish. Well, perfection as far as running the option is concerned, Ted. 36 yards, and a beautiful pitch by Tony Rice. He had two options here. He could have kept the football and cut it upfield for the first down. Watch this. 
Beautiful move by Tony Rice. He just pitches it out. He knows Waters has got that tremendous speed down the sidelines. Waters now with 60 yards on four carries, and that's on this drive. And the Notre Dame students are making their feelings known as they have tossed oranges en masse into the end zone, where Waters just ran for the touchdown. Craig Hendrick on for the extra point out of Jim Sexton's hold. We talked about Anthony Johnson being a money runner this year. Ricky Waters now has nine touchdowns this year. And Hendrick with the extra point through and a 79-yard touchdown drive by Notre Dame all on the ground. And the Irish on Waters' touchdown run leads 7-0 as we pause for a regional break. thinking about the Orange Bowl, but that's the last thing in the world that Lou Holtz and his football team is going to be thinking about right now. they got three tough games ahead of them. Two, two tough games coming up next week at Penn State. They're not even going to be thinking about the Hurricanes. They go up to College Park and play uh, Penn State up there. That won't be an easy football game. And then, of course, Miami Hurricane down in the Orange Bowl. This copyrighted telecast presented by the authority of Sports Channel America intended for the private non-commercial use of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, retransmission, or other use of this event without the express written consent of Sports Channel America is prohibited. Craig Hendrick will kick off with Notre Dame leading 7-0. 6.54 to play in the first quarter. Good that, kick. That Michael Bowen fumbling the ball inside the five. Oh, and he made a good move to get up the sideline. Excellent move by Bowen to get by Andre Jones, and then he turned it up the field and got out across the 30-yard line. But Andre Jones was going so fast, he couldn't, he just couldn't pull off. And actually, he's an easy man to beat when you're all out like that. Right here, now you can always beat the first man when he's all out speed as Andre Jones comes down here. Just a little move, Andre Jones just can't react back to that fake. Bowen gets down the right sidelines and gives the Mustangs good field position at the 32. There's the Irish scoring drive, just seven running plays to go to 79 yards. Simeon pressuring Romo, and he throws an incompletion. You know, Paul, you're talking about the bowl games. And it's interesting. Lou Holtz, when he talks about what the senior class means to him today, says, you know, the one thing about our seniors is they know what it's like to lose here. Seniors here were five and six as freshmen. That's right. And so there's two classes now of Notre Dame players here that have never lost a game and three straight classes that are going to play in a New Year's Day game. Well, and when you're talking to a high school kid, that means so much today if you go to a bowl every year. I mean, boy, you talk about a big point in the recruiting is concerned. You know, there's, what, 19 or 20 bowls now, Ted, so there's a lot of teams going to bowls, and it's very important. So that's the problem with the exchange. Again, Rumble, just drop that. That's the second fumble snap from center. So it's third and ten now for the Mustangs. And even though this is a very young football team, I know Forrest Gregg, as we get a shot of him over the side, he doesn't like that. I mean, this is their eighth game of the season. These kind of mistakes should not happen, even to this young football team, where a center and a quarterback can't get together on the exchange. And he uncorks a deep one for Gleaver, and that's broken up nicely. Gleaver had some space in there, but Patrick Terrell, roaming in the secondary, broke it up. Any Anytime there's a 35 or 40-yard pass close to the hash marks or inside the hash mark, the free safety, Pat Terrell, should have a chance. You see him. Now, he's right in the middle. He's watching the quarterback's eyes. Here comes the pass 35 yards down the middle, and he has plenty of time to get over there and to react to it. Free yep. safety should have a shot at the interception by Kleiss, and Ismail with a grab at the 35, and he got through. There's a flag down. The goes, but there is a flag down. The most exciting player in college football, no question. The Rocket runs one back, but I think they're going to bring it back. And very disgusted behind the play, Todd Light walks off the field. As I think he knows what that flag was about. That would have been number six in this sophomore's career. Eight's the record. Eight return kicks in a career held by Johnny Rogers. He 
has two more years, though. That's right. <laughs> and then two. he finished with his sophomore year. And they'll mark it 15 yards with spot. But, you know, this is the type of game, and Forrest Gregg knows this, where the Rocket can make damage on special teams. That's the toughest right. thing for Forrest Gregg now is to find enough quality athletes to man competent special teams. He has to use all the starters on it. He sure does. And I tell you, you know, we, we should also mention that Cliff Branch, a former great receiver in Oakland, he also had eight kicks and punt returns for touchdowns at Colorado. But under Lou Holtz, I think the special teams have, have just really stood out. My heavens, this would have been the 13th kick under Lou Holtz's regime for touchdowns in a short period of four years. Man, that's amazing, Ted. 13 kick returns for touchdowns, kickoffs and punt returns. Following the penalty, the Irish put it in play from their 26, and Waters takes the pitch and gets about two. He almost was tackled by teammate Adrian Jarrell, a freshman who's trying to block for him. Finally, Collins making the tackle at the 28. Ricky Waters will be back next year. The Irish losing only Anthony Johnson and Tony Rice from the main players in the offensive backfield. They lose three starters on the offensive line, Brennan, Grunhard, and Brown. Now Rice throwing out to Rocket on the far side. And Ismail has a first down to the 43 on the first completed pass for the Irish. 14-yard pickup to the Rocket. He dropped one. Looked like it was going to be an easy 55-yard pass on the first play. Here it is. Comes down the line of scrimmage. It looks like it's the option. He pulls it off, and he hits the Rocket down the right sideline. That's Ragev Ismail's 21st catch on the year. And strange enough, strangely enough, he has yet to catch a touchdown pass this year. And he would have had one first play from scrimmage today. Had the connection with Rice been a little bit better. An easy one. Rice has all kinds of room to run, but he's going to throw it instead, and he hits his mile to the SMU 35. And that's the type of ball that's going to help Tony Rice's confidence heading into two tough games. And anytime you give the Rocket man-to-man -man coverage, Richie Butler, the freshman quarterback from Austin, Texas, now here it comes again, roll out left. Richie Butler's got to give him so much room back there. The Rocket's got about a six-yard. Here comes Butler up to make the tackle. 22-yard pickup. Well, the Irish quickly to the Mustang 35. Send Eilers and Ismail split right. And let's see who's got that ball. Rice got it back. Yeah, he did. A little, uh, loose with the football here in the first quarter for Notre Dame. Let's take a look at this. Mustangs had a great shot to recover this fumble. Here comes the opt-in. And actually, it has a little miscue. A little miscue with the fullback that time. He put the football in there and couldn't get it back out. Chris Collins almost had it back for SMU. Collins got to be hot for not getting it. No gain on the play. Second and ten. Rice turning it up, and he gets about four. And the Irish will have a third and six ahead of them. Rice having completed just one pass in each of the last two Notre Dame games, and I think Lou Holtz knows that the uh, the odds are to win his last two. He's going to have to be able to throw the ball. Throw it yep. the way Rice did against Purdue. And here's a quick screen, but Ismail fell as he caught the ball, and it goes for no gain. He was forced down. Poor pass by Tony Rice going out to the the rocket. He's, that's his third catch on the day. Boy, he had some people out in front. That's a little screen pass, Ted. After Rocket catches that football, he's waiting for Mike Brennan and Tim Ryan to come down the line of scrimmage and get in front to perform that screen. Well, there's an interesting decision by Lou Holtz, and I think knowing the opposition is why he's doing this here. He's going for it on fourth and six from the SMU 31 with three wide receivers, and Rice throws it, and he threw another bad ball intended to Rodney Culver. Rodney Culver and Rice looking at each other, saying, what were you doing? I don't know, what were you doing? I'll and tell you one thing, Rodney looked like he pulled off the pattern, and Rice wanted him to continue on. Just a mix-up there. And so SMU will take over on downs at the Notre Dame 31-yard line, late first quarter, 7-0 Irish. 
Ashley, 7 nothing. SMU, though, taking over on downs at their 32-yard line, giving the love, but he goes nowhere. Jeff Alm in his last Irish home game, and freshman Eric Simeon making the tackle. Mustangs are not going to run it very often or very well. You know, as a running back, if you're playing in the run-and-shoot offense, it's a great offense to be a running back, Ted. I mean, you don't have to have a lot of great speed because the defense is always playing pass. So when you do get a chance to run the football, you usually can break uh, break the line of scrimmage for a few yards. Romo putting it up deep, and that's incomplete. Intended downfield for Jason Wolf on the fire sideline. Well, Wolf was open for an instant, but the pass was overthrown. Romo now 6 out of 11 for only 21 yards, and he's been hurried on four or five occasions. Lou Holtz was expecting this to be a replay of the Stanford game. He was expecting SMU to throw it 55 to 60 times. That is what they do best in the run, and shoot Paul takes a lot of pressure off the young offensive line. You better learn how to pass block and hurry in this offense. There's another same play, and that ball is incomplete. By a nice grab by Andy Bergfeld, but he could not come down in bounds right in front of the Mustang bench. Beautiful timing wow. that time. Romo put it right on the money, didn't he? There it is, a little half roll out right, and he just throws for a spot. Andy Bergfeld comes up with a great catch. Now watch, see if he gets in bounds. Now the out of bounds is not the white mark marker over there. That's the start of the bench pad. Looked like he was in bounds there for a minute. Short punt. And a line drive and a fair catch called for by Eilers who fell on that live football at the Notre Dame 44. So not a good punt by Casey Kleiss. A 24-yard punt was all he got there. And the Irish with 124 yards of offense already will take over at their 44 with a first down. Last uh, pass that was incomplete for Notre Dame, Paul, fourth down. You know, Lou Holtz has said one of the things that has hindered Notre Dame's passing offense is that they just don't throw the ball as much in practice as other teams. And it hurts a Tony Rice who probably needs to get into a system where he throws lots of passes in practice. And they run out of three or four different offensive formations that they got to work on every week. Now Rick Meyer, quarterback, and he gives it to another freshman, Dorsey Levins, and he's all the way to the SMU, 46. So there's a freshman running back that you're going to see a lot of here, Dorsey Levins from Syracuse, New York. Two highly touted freshmen right here, Rick Meyer, rated number one in the USA last year. Freshman from Goshen, Indiana, led his team to a high school state championship. Dorsey Levins, the big tailback from Syracuse, Levin's running off the right side. And he is submarine down, but not until he gets inside the Mustang 40 by Marcelo Simmons. Nice move by Dorsey Levin's here. Rodney Culver gets a block back on the weak side, and Levin's cuts it outside his right tackle, puts his shoulder down, and gets that extra two yards. Inside of a minute to play in the first quarter, Notre Dame leading 7-0. Running now second down and two at the SMU 38. And it's a quick hit to Culver, and that's a first down to the 30. What Horace Gregg mentioned, it, and that most coaches mention this about Notre Dame, he's been so impressed with this, the speed that he's seen. Backs, both offensively and defensively, so much different from past Notre Dame teams. It really is. And I tell you, and that's the difference in modern day football, too, Ted. But the, the kids playing the defensive corners and the safety and the offensive skilled people are so much quicker than, than for instance, the teams that, that I played on here at Notre Dame. We are talking about the 50s and 60s. Everybody's quick today. You know, Offensive linemen back 20 years ago were not very fast. And today, almost every position on this football field uh, is, is really everybody's looking for speed, speed. If it's a defensive tackle, if it's a defensive end. Speed's the name of the game. Well, Rodney Culver's carry ending the first quarter. Notre Dame leading 7-0. They'll be deep in SMU territory when we start the second quarter. Notre Dame football on Sports Channel America. Pretty good Miami, don't you think, Paul? I guarantee it. Two weeks. Nice. Another football game that is matching up. We can look ahead. 
Uh, we mentioned earlier that the football team and the coaches did, did not like to look ahead, but well, that shaping up is one of the biggest games of the year. There's Ismail carrying out of the full house, and he is down to the one-yard line. First play of the second quarter, and the Rocket takes it to the one-yard line. Here comes a rocket, I'll tell you. Every time he touches the football, he averages 18 yards a pop. And here he goes down the right side, and he picks up 26 yards here. Malcolm Barlingi makes the stop. The freshman, he's a yard short. Well, now, we're going to watch something here. Lou Holtz said yesterday, one thing he wanted to do today was to get Peter Graham a touchdown, and Peter Graham has come into quarterback, and they run a sneak intended, and I don't think he caught the snap. <laughs> Lou Holtz wants Peter Graham to score a touchdown today. He's a fifth-year senior quarterback, and I think they set up a sneak play there, except he didn't get the snap right. He says to Mike Helt, who's the junior, and what a, what a job Mike Helt's done all year long, the junior from Tampa, Florida. He looks at Mike and says, what's happening? Just get me the ball. We're going to sneak in here. Well, I think that might be the play here again. Nope. Now he's going to keep it on an option. And he's in. Senior from Rumson, New Jersey, gets his touchdown. Remember last week, Lou Holtz got the walk on Ted McNamara in late in the game for this reason. Right. He said yesterday, Peter Graham's my guy this week. <laughs> All right. So Peter Graham, actually third quarterback for the Irish, gets the touchdown, and it is Hedrick to boot through the extra point. 56-yard drive for Notre Dame. Gives them a 14 to nothing lead early in the second quarter as we pause for a regional break. Well, the Irish, a 14 to nothing lead now as Hendrick boots off here early second quarter. This will be Corey Beard from the 10 yard line. And well, another good hole on the kick return team for SMU. They get it out near the 35. Well, the reason for that is they have so much experience running back kickoffs, Dan, <laughs> That's right. that uh, after eight or nine games into the season, they're probably the best blocking team in the country as far as kickoff returns are concerned. Whereas first quarter numbers, very lopsided as you might expect. Lou Holt says that Notre Dame only practices one kick return because he said a good football team doesn't have to do it more than once or twice a game. That's right. Romo takes the snap. Another quick pass out to Michael Bowen in the flat and DeJuan Francisco on top of him. And this, again, offense, very similar to what we saw at Stanford. They used the short pass in right. place of the run. They'll gain four yards on it and take it. You said something yesterday in the South Bend Tribune, Paul, about Forrest Greg. I thought it was about as nice a compliment as you could pay to him. There he is. I tell you, had a wonderful nine-year experience with that man right there. And I first met Forrest right here in this stadium. He was an All-American tackle at SMU. And I tell you, there may have been only two guys on our football team that didn't need Lombardi to get to the Hall of Fame. Forrest Gregg was one of them. He would have been a Hall of Famer. I don't care if he would have played with the New Orleans Saints. He was that good, Ted. Great football player, great leader. And I tell you, SMU has absolutely did the absolute best thing that they could do in hiring this man to bring this program back. Because the program now at SMU is in the best hands possible. And this team that you're watching today, all these young freshmen, four or five years are going to be a different football team. You watch. Penalty backing SMU up five. You know, a lot of people around the country have spent a lot of time this week questioning this game. Why is this game being played? What's about the publicity around this game? I'll tell you about Forrest Gregg here in a moment and how he approached this game. Here's Roma being blitzed, and he dumps it out incomplete. Bolkar coming inside for Notre Dame. Pressuring Romo into the incompletion. Best pass defense against a great passer is at the pass rush. And I tell you, Forrest Gregg, he said, I had such a great ex uh, uh, positive experience playing here and remembering what a great moment it was for me to play here that I wanted my players to come up here and have this opportunity because looking back on it, years to come, they'll say that this is one of their great days to have the opportunity to play here. Mustangs now with third down and 11 at their 34. Romo in trouble, and he 
he shovels it ahead to Love. And Kevin Love is to the 40-yard line where Stan Smagala, playing for the first time since the USC game, made the tackle. And the Notre Dame defense playing well here in the first half. Forces the Mustangs into their fourth punt. See, they match up pretty good against the run and shoot. They've got so much speed back there. And the nickel defense, they're bringing in Rod Smith, who's also very, very quick, the sophomore from St. Paul. So they got five guys covering their receivers who can really run. Good kick here, but the Rock, oh, he fumbled it. And I think SMU got that one. They sure did inside the 20. He's shown a tendency to do that every once in a while. He's got a great pair of hands, but he let the ball come into his body, and it, hit his, it looked as if it hit the top of his shoulder pads. And Steve Bellis got it back for Notre Dame. No. There it is again. He let it come too far into his body. He caught one up against SC that caused six. The Rocket, of course, so dangerous when he catches that football. He's ready to go. But he started a little bit too soon. And you see Lou Holtz giving him a pat on the head over there. Well, it's funny. You know, the Rocket never has returned punts until just a couple of weeks ago, right? I think it was the Air Force game. Well, everybody kept kicking away from him on the kickoff. So right. Lou said, I'll stop that. I'll let him return punts. We've got to kick it to him. But he hasn't had an awful lot of experience catching punts. And it's been a little difficult. Here's a little quick pass to Wolf, and Jason Wolf is to the 15, where DeJuan Francis makes the tackle. So two Notre Dame turnovers in the first half, both fumbles, both in their own territory, giving the Mustangs a chance. Here it is, a little rollout left. That's Eric Simeon, another freshman for Notre Dame, getting to see some action. That linebacker spot. Juan Francisco makes the stop there, pick up of about four. Well, 55% completion percentage, and now, well, he avoided the blitz, gets rid of the ball, and throws it into the band. Bolkar and Junior, well, Bolkar and Simeon were in on top of him, and somehow <laughs> Romo avoided the sack and got rid of the ball. Yeah, made an improper cut downfield. Romo was looking for the receiver to cut back towards the corner of the end zone. That goes back to what I was going to mention before, that fourth down pass that Rice and Culver mixed up. Lou Holtz and his offense will teach quarterbacks to throw to spots. The receiver's supposed to be there. Exactly. Even if somebody's there, you got to know that spot if you're running a spot passing game. A nice pass it back against the grain, and that's a first down. Jason Wolf on the catch from Romo. Come on. Rod Smith, the tackle, and SMU has first and goal at the Notre Dame 5. Jason Wolf at the start of this football game. He had 31 receptions on the year, so they like to go to Wolf. Wolf is what they call the R-back. Good pass receiver, and he's also, also can run the football. Andre Jones was offside, but it's a touchdown anyway. Bergfeld catching the pass from Romo for a touchdown, and it will count. Andre Jones was offside for Notre Dame, and the penalty will be declined, and SMU has scored a touchdown. The beautiful move by Andy Burfield, the freshman red shirt. This kid's from Tyler, Texas. Beautiful move over on the left side. He beats Stan Smigala over here. Look at Burkfield. He gets rid of his man, and he's wide open right there at the corner. So the fumble punt giving SMU a chance to score a 19-yard drive. Mike Romo now 11 out of 19 for 50 yards, one touchdown. That's his 11th touchdown pass of the year. Inside, defense will be forced on a succeeding kickoff. Well, they're going to enforce the penalty on the kickoff. The touchdown play, of course, counting. And here is Lomanick now to attempt the extra point. Junior from Miami, Florida. And it's blocked by the Irish, and they can run this back. And Andre Jones is going to score. This is a defensive extra point for Notre Dame. How about that? Well, that's a new rule in college football. That's two points for Andre Jones. Nobody's going to catch this guy. This guy's got tremendous speed. The junior from Highfield, Maryland, gets two points back. Number 30 in the front of your picture, Nick Smith is the man that blocked the kick. 
And if it was caught in the air, it was by Andre Jones. You can run it back for a defensive extra point, the first in Notre Dame history. There it is. And it's two points. Look at the penetration. Let's see if we could... Can we get who uh, got that block for Notre Dame? I think it was Nick Smith. Nick Smith's going to get credit for this block, and Andre Jones goes all the way. So SMU gets six, and the Irish get two back. And it's now 16-6 to six, Notre Dame. Six after freshman Nick Smith blocked the extra point attempt by SMU, and Andre Jones ran it in for a defensive two-point play, which it happened in the stadium last year. Rice did it to Notre Dame. It's just the second year for that rule. And uh, a huge play because you get two, right. and you get the ball. Three-point turnaround very quickly. And so SMU having a little problem with the kicking game. They've had a missed field goal and a blocked extra point now in this first half. And Notre Dame, after the fumbled punt by Rocket Ismail, is going to have Ricky Waters back as the deep man on this kickoff. Stangs don't have many offensive yards in this half, but they've had two good chances to score. 90-yard return is what Andre Jones will be credited with. And here's a short little pooch kick by Anderson. It's caught by Steve Bellis at the 34-yard line, and Notre Dame will take over there. You can make a fair catch of that, too. But Bellis decided not to. Here comes the special teams again for Lou Holtz. There's number 30, Nick Smith. That's the block. Freshman from Cincinnati. because that ball was caught in the air by Andre Jones, could it be advanced? It's happened a few times this season in Division 1A, only once last year, and that was here, as we said, when Rice did it against Notre Dame. Well, the Irish now start first down at their 34. Rick Meyer, the freshman from Goshen, Indiana, still the quarterback. And the give is to Dorsey Levins. And Percy Levins eats up huge chunks with his running. He's not explosive and like quick, but all of a sudden you look down, he's, he's kind of hurled his way for seven yards. And then up at halftime, we'll look back at Notre Dame's great winning tradition. We took a quick glance at that in our open. Notre Dame making more history here today. Athletic Director Dick Rosenthal will be by. We'll talk a little bit about the bowl situation, I'm sure. We'll have first half stats and highlights for you. Waters on the counter, and Waters into the secondary, gets a first down to the 46-yard line. Nice trap block by Tim Ryan, the left guard, a junior from Cincinnati, pulling out from his left guard position, opened up the hole off the right side. Ryan's flipping out. A lot of, all right, a lot of young offensive linemen played last week for Notre Dame. Another one in the game. Well, actually, that was a senior, Tom Gorman playing his last home game. He's come in there at the left guard spot. Now Meyer's going to throw it on first down. And over the middle, Waters is wide open. Well thrown ball and inside the 25. Nice touch. Ricky Waters saw a lot of action last year from a flanker. He's a fine pass receiver. This is his 10th catch of the year. A little roll out left and Rick Myers got all day long. He's got to throw it over the linebackers and in front of the safeties right there. Beautiful pitch and a nice catch by Rick. 30, 36 yards. And a first down now at the SMU 24. Notre Dame leading 16 to 6 early in the second quarter. And Levins from the tailback spot gets a few yards. It appears fairly certain that Lou Holtz is going to make sure that Anthony Johnson and that Tony Rice are fully ready and healthy for next week's game at Penn State. And this figures to be the last chance this year to get a lot of the freshmen and a very talented group of freshmen sure do. playing time. Well, they got two flanked on the right side. Ray Griggs and William Pollard. 
two freshman receivers. Meyer going to keep it. And Meyer is down. He got a couple of yards on that play, just inside the 20. Malcolm Borlenghi out of the secondary on the tackle for the Mustangs. Would have been a better decision if he would have headed upfield. That's not going to be a big part of Rick Meyer's arsenal next year if he is the Notre Dame quarterback. Well, he's still going to be called upon to run that play, though, because that's an important play in, in the thinking offensively of Lou, of Lou Holtz. I asked Lou before the game, Ted, I said, he's going to add a few more wrinkles for Rick Meyer next year, and he said, of course. Draw play to Waters, and he got tripped up. Waters was trying to find that hole, and he got tripped up as he got to the 17-yard line. Steve Bonatti on the hit. Well, he had 100 yards last week. It looks like he's headed up now for another 100-yard afternoon. We still have eight and a half minutes to go in the first half, and Ricky Waters got 73 yards on seven carries. And now Billy Hackett is going to try a field goal of 34 yards. Jim Sexton is the holder. And Billy Hackett's kick is good. I tell you, Hackett showed a very strong leg last week against Navy, and he booted that one through easily. A 34-yard field goal gives Notre Dame a 19-6 lead as we pause now for a regional. It's going to be my first time ever to do a ball game at Penn State. I'm really looking forward to it. I've never been to State College. And, uh, How do you get there? Uh, it's very difficult. <laughs> I think I'll leave about Wednesday. <laughs> You and I both, the first time is there next week. Here's the dribble kick, run back by Jay Nisbet of SMU, and he's to the 35-yard line, where Carl McGill, freshman, made the tackle. The Irish going 48 yards to set up the Hackett field goal. 19-6 for another name, with 8 minutes and 11 seconds remaining in the first half. Duke over North Carolina State, 7 to nothing. West Virginia, touchdown ahead of Rutgers first quarter. Big game for West Virginia. They're hoping they may get to a New Year's Day Bowl. With Major Harris, and there's 19 or 20 bowls, I'll guarantee you, they'll be in some bowl. Romo looking around, finds a secondary man, and it was almost caught. Bowen had the pass go off his fingertips with Francisco covering. Francisco covered. The men that they've thrown the football to, it seems as if Francisco's got him covered like a glove. He's really, he's really been on top of the man that decided to cover so closely today, Ted. He's really done a fine job in that secondary. I don't know if defense has really made some big strides the last couple of weeks under Barry Alvarez's guidance. Here's a little clip out to Love, and Kevin Love is brought down by Terrell at the 43. So an eight-yard pickup, and it'll be third and short. He's a freshman from Houston. He doesn't have a lot of speed, but he runs the football with determination, we understand, and he's got a good pair of hands coming out of that backfield. But as you can see here, he doesn't turn it up any great deal of speed. Can't get away from that linebacker. Romo now 12 out of 21, Ted, for 58 yards and one touchdown. 12 completions, just 58 yards. You're not going to win against Notre Dame doing that. There's an incompletion intended for Bowen, and the Mustangs fail on third and two. And they'll be forced to punt. And if you ask, why don't they run the football on third and two, they got a lot better chance of picking up the first down, throwing it, than they do running it against this Notre Dame defense. Waters back deep. Casey Kleiss, fifth punt. Good kick. Yeah. Well, he put that over Waters' head. And Waters backpedals and catches at the five-yard line. Good cut. Two good cuts. And he may go. He slip arms the last man, and Ricky Waters goes 95 yards for a touchdown. That's the second punt return today, return against SMU. And this one's going to stand up. Earlier, the Rocket got one called back, and this time, Ricky Waters goes all the way. <laughs> 95 yards for Ricky Waters. It might be a little, a little more than 
that when they yeah. count his momentum took him back inside the five and Ricky Waters goes right down the right sidelines. He returned one last year for six points. And this is the longest one in Notre Dame history, 97 yards. That's the official announcement. So the longest punt return in Notre Dame history by Ricky Waters, 97 yards with the extra point by Hendrick. And with seven minutes and four seconds remaining in the first half, the Irish have opened up a 26 to six lead. Game today, longest punt return in school history. Watch him, he's on his back truck, back pedals inside the five, 97 yards. Watch that move right there. Now, he gets good blocking right here, gets a good, good standoff block by Juan Francisco, picks off two, then he breaks a tackle. I think it's Sean Davis down here trying to get in, get the standoff from Sean Davis. He's out of the picture here, he gives a good little stiff arm, and 97 yards later, he's in the record books. A third punt return that Waters has run back for a touchdown in his career. And look at what they've done in the hole. That's amazing. It really is. That's eight touchdowns by two members of this football team. Of course, the other five were by Tim Brown, the Heisman Trophy winner, a couple of years ago. And, of course, Ismail had one called back earlier in this right. game on a clipping penalty. Corey Beard just staying in bounds when he fields that kick and then slips down across the 25-yard line. A little bit of drizzle has fallen this morning. Not much, but just a little bit enough to maybe make the field slightly slick in certain places. Now, how about that? That Notre Dame punt return record. You remember that one, Paul, don't you? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you one thing. That's the third one for Ricky Waters. Red Miller in 1909. Oh, yeah. I was around there. Red one back 95 yards against Olivet. They're not on the Notre Dame schedule. There's Wolf catching a little pass from Romo, and he's brought down after a gain of a few yards by Dewan Francisco. Mark that one just about the 32. Romo, half roll out to the right. Picked up four or five yards. I tell you, as years go by and weeks go by, actually, this young team of SMU is much more familiar with the offense. I don't know if you, about you, Ted, but I like to run and shoot. I don't know who he was trying to throw that one to. It looked like he might be just trying to get rid of it. Now, Forrest Craig said he'd run a little bit of it in uh, Green Bay, run a little bit of it right. in Cincinnati, and he really admired Mouse Davis, who has been, I guess, the most prominent right. practitioner of it. At Houston. Right. And Forrest said, listen, I know if I came into SMU and I told everybody I was going to throw the ball out, I'd have an easier time getting good kids in skill position to come here right and it's a little bit easier there's blocking techniques he says are a little simpler for young offensive linemen and there's a pass just off the fingertips of mitchell gleber at the 50 yard line that pass should have been caught ted right on the money good pitch by romo yeah. mitchell gleber on a little post pattern had the first down easily and this pass right there a little yeah. post pattern over to the middle Mitchell Glaber has got some good bloodlines. I'm sure you ran across his father several times. His dad was the late sportscaster, Frank Glaber. I worked with Frank a couple of games years ago with CBS. Enjoyed working with him. He's a classy man. Well, Waters drops that punt. And I don't think he ever picked it up. He did. There's a flag down. And let's see who finally got the ball. I think it's SMU. Yes, sir. Waters did not do a very good job there going down to pick that ball up. I think he's a little bit tired after that 97-yard run. He yeah, relaxed I heard, a little, I heard a little Yeah, I heard a few footsteps, too. Yeah, man. he relaxed a little bit. But that penalty is against SMU. The flag was thrown at the snap of the ball, and it's against SMU, and so that will negate the fumble recovery. Illegal motion, offense, fourth down. Well, they'll have to go back and re-kick it. Well, the Mustangs almost got their third fumble recovery deep in Notre Dame territory. Second one deep, third one overall. <laughs> and so, well, it's like you, you stay in until you drop one. Yeah, now they put the rocket back in. But I'll tell you, I don't blame Lou Holtz, and I know what he's saying. He, you know, you dropped the ball, that was okay. Go down and pick it up. 
that's what I don't think Lou Holtz is very happy about. <laughs> he didn't look like he went after the football with any vigor, as they say, right? No, he just kind of stood there and watched it, and I'm sure that's what Lou didn't like. Now, short sure. line drive, Ismail letting it bounce, and fielding the high hop, but he still has a chance, you never know. He's and the rocket is to the 35. Tough for SME because every ball they kick today is going to have that possibility. Here they get. Bringing a little problems today getting a hold of the handle here on some of these punts. But the rocket gets it right back. Now watch his moves. 230 yards of offense for Notre Dame thus far, and Tony Rice has returned to quarterback. He's going to throw it. He has the rocket wide open. And Ismail is down inside the 35 of SMU. Over 30-yard pickup that time for the rocket. Like I said earlier, every time he touches the football, he averages about 18 yards a pop. And here he is from the slot. He'll run down the left sidelines, and he cuts it upfield. And the safety, number 40, runs away from him. He what? should go over there and try to help out. That's Gary Brabham. Yeah, he ran downfield with Eilers, and right. uh, that was not good. 29-yard pickup for the Rocket. So it's first down at the 35. Five and a half minutes to play in the first half. With Notre Dame leading 26-6. And that ball throw too high. Intended for William Pollard. Now you watch Tony Rice throw it. There's no questioning. And Tony Holt said this a lot this week. His arm strength is fine. And Lou said, you know, next year Tony Rice will get a chance to play football somewhere. If somebody works with him on throwing the ball a lot, he may become a quarterback in the professional ranks. Ted Robinson, Paul Horning at Notre Dame Stadium. We have 5.33 to play in the first half. The Irish lead 26-6. And the ball second and 10 at the SMU 35. And Rice has a lot of room here. He is near another first down. Rice started this game as the leading rusher for the Irish this year at 653 yards. Waters, with that long touchdown run in the first quarter, going to be right up on his heels. Anthony Johnson now in the full house along with Waters and Eilers. It is a first down. And Rice is going to keep this one. And Rice breaks through. And he's inside the 15 for another Irish first down. I'll tell you one thing. They may not play Tony Rice at quarterback in the pros, but he's too good an athlete not to make the professional ranks. You're absolutely right. He's got to play somewhere. This kid is too good an athlete. They could go move. I believe me, he could move right in and play defensive safety or cornerback. I mean, he's that quick. Lou Holt said this week he thinks Rice would be a wide receiver and a good one in professional football. Got good hands, see. We haven't seen him catch too many passes, but I'll tell you one thing. He can run. Wonderful instincts running the football. Inside goes Ismail, and he's inside the five. Ismail's caught four passes already and now runs it. Now just inside the five-yard line. Rice is averaging about 170 yards in total offense a game. Today he's four out of seven for 65 yards. He also picked, has picked up 40 yards running the football. And here comes the rocket. They put him in in the little full house backfield. This guy has a... I tell you, he runs by tackler so many. This is not just this game, folks, you're looking at. We've been watching this all year long. Has gained over 350 yards running the football. And two tight ends, Anthony Johnson, following at the middle for a touchdown. And they'll stop him up close, I'll tell you. Anthony Johnson for his 10th touchdown rushing on the year, number 12 on the season. And I think Lou Holtz wanted to see that too, to see Johnson score a touchdown in his last home game. The man that Lou Holtz says has the most special presence on the Notre Dame team. Out of the eye this time, not full house. Good blocking on the right side. 75 is Tim Grunhard. And the extra point put through by Hentrick. And with four minutes and two seconds to play in the half, Notre Dame has now opened it up and they lead 33 to 6. Penalty on 
SMU, when they recovered the fumble punt, really hurt them. They're not a team that can afford to make any mistakes like that. Okay. You know, we should mention all Yesterday, again, people say, why is SMU here? Why play this game? This is the first plane trip for SMU this year. Forrest Greg said he couldn't believe the look on the eyes of some of his players' faces yesterday because it was the first time many of them had ever been on an airplane. They walked in here to the stadium, and Forrest said after working out, I could see the looks on their faces. He said, I let them go. I told them after they showered, they had a half an hour of free time. They could go anywhere they wanted on the Notre Dame campus. Many of them went to the bookstore and bought uh, basically souvenirs. Some of them went to the library and posed right. for pictures. It was an amazing day. You remember what Forrest Craig? You remember what Forrest Craig told us about uh, his good coaching, intelligent football players again at the beginning yeah. of the ball game? One of his players said, "Beware of the onside kick." He said, "I've never heard that in professional football in my life." There's the debut of Notre Dame basketball coming up on Sports Channel. The regular season debut on November 28th for the Irish play San Francisco. 19 more games here on Sports Channel. And Bowen throws a live ball back into play. It's picked up by Corey Beard, and he's down at the three-yard line. Now, that was not an intelligent play by an intelligent man. But that's an intelligent kick. By Craig Hendrick, that's exactly where he wants to kick that kickoff to the right side over here near the out of bounds marker. And look what happens. He knows he's dead right there. Had no chance. He had to throw it back in bounds, hoping to get a ladder with somebody to get it up to at least the fifth uh, 20 yard line, but no luck. And, uh, when the Mustangs sit around and show that one on the films this week, that'll be exhibit A of now how not to play the game. So Romo backed up now to his three-yard line, and that play goes nowhere. But they lost yardage, giving it to Stuart Ison. And the ball is at the one-yard line. Their name scoring drive, and the long pass to Ismail, setting it up. Six plays, 64 yards. Flannery, a senior from Lakewood, Ohio, checks in defensively. And the Mustangs backed up now. Second down and 11. Ball marked to the two-yard line. Romo rolling out to avoid the pressure. And then throws an incompletion. Wolf, the only receiver in the area. Romo's over there in trouble. Everybody was covered. He was staring down the gun of Chris Zorich, who leveled him. Everybody's covered here, and then you have to move a little more to your right. There's Chris Zorich right on top of him. Keep in mind, Zorich, for the most part this year, the All-American nose tackle in Notre Dame, usually has to fight off two men, center and a guard, on almost every passing situation. Now the Mustangs backed up third down and 11. 3-10 to play in the half. Boy, they almost got Romo right away. He finally gets rid of it and almost got caught. Boy, a nice pass under a tough circumstance, and Todd White broke it up, intended for Derwin Ware. And now Samuel will be punting from deep in their end zone. The back line of the end zone is where Casey Kleiss will be forced to kick it from. Seventh punt of the first half for SMU. Pat Eilers back deep on the return for Notre Dame, giving Ricky Waters and the Rocket a little break. Notre Dame not. Well, let's see. Kleiss is going to take a safety. Wow. Well, Notre Dame did not put any rush on at all, and Casey Kleiss stepped out and took the two points. They took two. No, well, I don't understand that. Well, theoretically, the only one way to look at it is Forrest was going to take two points and get the kick off because he figured if he kicked the football, they might return it for a touchdown. Or they're going to have the football about the 30 or 35-yard line. Well, of course, they put themselves in jeopardy of if they're going to kick it deep to, to get 
to kick it to the rocket or somebody like that. And that's the same same thing. I don't agree with it either. Yeah, I, I would never question. No. I mean, obviously Forrest Craig had a motive, but I don't think you want to teach your players to give up anything to a yeah. team. And you'd rather let hey, they can run it back against you more power to them. Well, it's 35-6 now with three minutes remaining in the first half of Notre Dame Stadium. 35-6, to six, the Irish lead following a safety intentionally taken by Hunter Casey Kleiss. Well, I've never seen a safety taken so early in a football game. You might expect this in the last four or five minutes of a football game when a team is leading by, you know, let's say six points or something. And Notre Dame did not have a block on at all. That's not no. something Lou Holtz would have done in that situation. They had a return set up and probably a fair catch. At halftime, we'll look at Notre Dame's winning tradition, past, yes, and now present. We'll also talk with Dick Rosenthal and first half stats and highlights all coming up. In three minutes, Notre Dame leading 35 to 6. And Ismail will have a chance here. Well, can't catch that one either. And now doesn't have much blocking. And he runs into a wall at the 25 yard line. Drew Randall. Freshman number 47 for the Mustangs really sent Rocket reeling backwards. I have a feeling there are going to be some practices on this this week. Second muff punt return of the day for the Rocket here. Ricky Waters had one. Oh, he really got hit too. Okay, these kids aren't giving up. That's one thing you'll see. SMU giving that extra little effort here. Peter Graham is the quarterback for Notre Dame. Ray Griggs in motion. Ryan Mahalko, the fullback, and Dorsey Levins, the tailback. Well, you can't play any more people than Lou Holtz has played already in the first half. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's almost emptied his bench already. He started substituting quite liberally even in the first, first quarter. And you know, most of Notre Dame's second team players are at the same experience level of SMU's players. Most of Notre Dame's second team players are freshmen, albeit they are highly recruited freshmen, highly regarded. Freshmen and sophomores, whereas SMU, of course, is playing almost entirely redshirt freshmen. Peter Graham, and he throws a completion there, and I think that's William Pollard on the far side. It is Pollard. That's first down yardage across the 35. Of course, you know, uh, you know, Ted, I'm a little bit high on this kid. Fort Knox, Kentucky. He wants this kid play in high school, and I think he's going to be a great football player. 6'5", 210 pounds, a sprinter on the track team in high school, and he's got a great pair of hands. This kid can run. We are not Notre Dame fans because next year, when it's Rick Meyer or Jake Kelsner at quarterback, there'll be a lot of talented receivers as targets for those men. Not much on that play. Good job defensively by SMU. Maybe the best job so far in the first half. Kenny Ray, 99, making the hit on Ryan Mahalko. He picked up a couple, and it's going to be second down and eight. With a minute and a half remaining in the first half. Notre Dame leading 35-6. to six. And Pete Graham's going to put it up. He throws long down the field, and Pollard is open. And Pollard got by a man. And Pollard is inside the 25. He's a pretty good target. 6'5", 210, freshman. Mr. Pollard's open over the middle, and Graham put it right on target. Good pass protection. And you would expect that, of course. Right here. He's got it over the linebacker in front of the safeties. And then Pollard breaks a tackle. Almost gets in for six points. 37-yard pickoff for Mr. Pollard, his third catch of the year. A little option here and a pitch to Steve Bellis. Oh, oh, move. Look at that. Now there is trapped in the backfield for no gain, and Bellis with a little stop and start got it down to the 13. Well, he does it all for Notre Dame, plays all the positions, and plays them well. Very important cog in this football team. Steve Bellis has done a great job. The senior from Phoenix puts a little move and just turns on the Jets down the right sidelines. <laughs> yeah, I really got Richie Butler caught there. Number four yeah. had the corner stopped and he got sucked in by that fake.
211 yards rushing now for Notre Dame. 50 seconds remaining in the half, and Bellis stumbled there fell to the ground, and so Pete Graham had to keep it for a loss. The Jets didn't work that time. <laughs> yeah, he kind of slipped. Rusty Setzer checks in in that Notre Dame backfield, and Graham's saying, wait a minute, we're, get up here. Steve Bellis had slipped down, being the deep back in the eye there on the handoff. Walter Boyd is in as the fullback, and he gets the ball, and Walter Boyd is going to Boyd, a sophomore from Hillsboro, North Carolina. His first touchdown. There he is. That's that's what, and it's tough for SMU, but that's what this game means for Notre Dame. The chance to get memories and thrills for a lot of young men that may never play much here. Hendrick obviously doing the extra point kicking here in the game and Hackett the field goal kicking. Hendrick boots it through again and Walter Boyd's 15-yard run makes it 42 to 6 with 15 seconds left in the half. End zone shot. Hands it off to Walter Boyd up front. Look at that hole. He's not he hasn't even been touched yet. He breaks a tackle. Kerry Brabham tried to get him, but he got in for six points. So the seniors have had a few moments in this game, and now it turns over to the young people again, at least for the rest of this week. Lou Holtz was talking all about the tri-captains of his team yesterday, Ned Bolkar, Anthony Johnson, and Tony Rice, and he says, you know, what makes them great leaders it's not that they lead themselves, but they've had the whole senior class, this whole senior class, which won the championship last year and has a shot at it this year. They've all become leaders. A very enthusiastic group of seniors that they pulled together at halftime of the USC game when Notre Dame was down. Here is Bowen. And Bowen, it's good. I'll tell you, SMU's run some kicks back well today. It's been the best part of their game. Flag He's down. out there at the 40-yard line, and there is a flag behind the play. And a holding call. 367 yards of offense for Notre Dame in the first half, and just 63 yards of offense for SMU. So none of that is terribly surprising. I can relate to that a little bit, Ted, because holding, holding against SMU. When I was a senior here at Notre Dame, I led the nation in kickoff returns, but that's not what you want to be leading the that's nation right. in. What was the two and eight well, everybody was kicking off yeah. to me about eight or nine times a game. You got a chance to return more kickoffs than anybody in the world. You're going to lead. You're going to lead the nation, and uh, SMU is going to lead the nation this year in kickoff returns, especially number of kickoffs. Doing a good job. With seven seconds remaining in the half, SMU from the 19-yard line. Well, ball with a quick one out, and it is caught and going down at the 26-yard line to end the first half is Kevin Love out of the backfield. And so we're at halftime at Notre Dame Stadium, and I don't think anybody is terribly surprised by what we've seen. Woo! Notre Dame doing enough to take control of the game and move within sight what? of their 22nd straight yeah. win. We'll be back <laughs> with more Notre Dame football. In a At 135 yards, and that's, of course, not counting that 65-yard punt return that was called back that he scored on a, a punt return touchdown. So. Another way that you don't run the score up, Notre Dame kicks off to start second half. Now, the Notre Dame had won the toss at the beginning of the game and deferred and kicked off to begin the game. So instead of taking the ball to start the second half, Notre Dame kicks off. Lou Holtz, 30 minutes away from becoming the winningest 
coach in one streak in the history of Notre Dame football. Mike Romo behind center for SMU. And Romo throwing on the run, and it's completed up the near sideline for first down yardage. And that was Mitchell Gleaver on the catch and sophomore Sean Davis on the coverage. 17-yard pass play there to Gleaver. Mitchell Gleaver is the only scholarship player who played for SMU in 1986 that stayed at the school for the two years they did not play football to be able to play again this year. And now Romo under pressure dumps it away. About to be sacked. By Troy Ridgely was in on the play. Sean Smith was in on the play. Actually, Brian Flannery was there, and Romo dumped it out to avoid the sack. He's got the whole second uh, second unit defense in already. And here's Romo on a little rollout. He's going to be rushed on the inside. Troy Ridgely was there, and he had to just throw it away. Well, it is second down at the 37, and there's a give to Love. Love trying to avoid his own blockers, then trying to avoid an official, and he finally is brought down across the 40 at the 42. George Poorman, 27, in on the tackle for the Irish. set off now. Doesn't need it. <laughs> Very few games that you have in your career, especially when you're a coach at Notre Dame, that you can relax like this so early in the second half. And that's an interception. Deflected and then caught by Brian Flannery for the interception inside the SMU 40. That's the second interception of the year for a defensive lineman. You remember Jeff Alm, he's got an interception on the year way back. And now Brian Flannery comes up with this deflected pass. Look on the outside, right into the hands of Mr. Flannery. So Notre Dame taking over, and they do have Tony Rice in for the first series of the second half, and he throws it to Derek Brown, and Brown is inside the 20. 17-yard pickup right in the uh, creek of the zone. Just covering the area back there defensively, and Tony Rice split the zone that time with the pitch to his big tight end. Very Brown. So now one play, Rice comes out, and Steve Bellis is coming in to play quarterback, a position he has played before at Notre Dame, although not this year. So Bellis takes the snap and gives to Anthony Johnson, but they blow the play dead before it gets off, and we'll see what the call is. Illegal procedure against Notre Dame. And at, this is all in Lou Holtz's tenure at Notre Dame, how well they've run the football. Good ball. And they're in a team this year, Paul, has held Notre Dame to under 200 yards a game on the ground. Wonderful rushing offense. We, the key to Notre Dame. If you're going to beat Notre Dame, you must stop the run, period. They are not a passing offensive team. This year, strictly, they're going to kill you with the run. If you don't stop them up front, you're going to come out on the short end of the score. Peter Graham in, and he pitches to Rusty Setzer, and Setzer's tripped up at the 20-yard line. Richie Butler on the tackle for SMU. Rusty Setzer, a sophomore from Gary, Indiana. Peter Graham is the quarterback now. Notre Dame has used actually four different quarterbacks, counting Bellis. We haven't seen Jake Kelsner this year, the highly talented freshman from Berwick, Pennsylvania. And here is Graham rolling right, and Pete Graham is down to about the 12-yard line. Here comes the option with Pete Graham. He's alone. He's six foot three, about 210. He cuts back inside, lowers his shoulder for an extra couple yards. 
It'll bring up third. He needs about five for the first down, Ted. Notice uh, Holtz's offense here, not throwing the ball in a passing situation. Third and, you know, 10 or 12. Normally, they'll throw the ball. They're just keeping it on the ground, but they can't stop it. And up the middle goes Boyd. There was a flag down on the play as Boyd gets it inside the five. And I believe SMU was offside. Pete Graham's presence here, very important this year. Declines the penalty, takes the first down run. Even though Pete Graham has not played much, it was important because Notre Dame needed an experienced backup to Tony Rice instead of just going with the freshman Rick Meyer. Decline. First down. And so Graham, who has scored one in the game, one touchdown, now has a first down and goal at the four-yard line. Inside goes to Craig Lanigan, and that is his first carry at Notre Dame. And Lanigan is to the three-yard line. One of the walk-ons that is in uniform today. And so just about everybody is going to play. And the big cheer coming up because 34, a late addition in here on this play. Ted McNamara, they call him Tank. He's the walk-on that scored last week against Navy. And he'll lead block here for Eilers, who was hit down and stopped at about the one-yard line. Good defense by SMU. Eilers trying to get in for his first touchdown on the year. Spotted at the two be third in goal. SMU staying with most of their first team defensive players. And this is Setzer, and he'll be in for the touchdown. Rusty Setzer with the Notre Dame touchdown, his first. Set up by the interception by Brian Flannery. Irish have certainly spread the wealth in this game. Sure have. They have played everybody, quarterback, halfback, fullback. Here goes Sets off the right side. McNamara overran the play, but it didn't matter. Sets are cut back inside for six. And the extra point through by Hentrick. So 10-51 remaining in the third quarter. Notre Dame now leading 49-6 as we pause for a regional Extended their halftime late. They actually blew the game open in the second quarter. A long punt return by Ricky Waters, the key play. And a couple of touchdown drives late. And Notre Dame today will win its 10th game of this season. And 22nd straight in Notre Dame history. But the road ahead, not easy. Penn State next week and then Miami for the regular season finale. to kick off. Line drive and Bowen at the goal line. And Bowen is to the 25, and that's all. Flag down late. Nick Smith, Brian Rattigan in on the tackle for Notre Dame. I tell you, that Bowen, he runs back those kickoffs with a little authority, though, doesn't he? He's, how many has that been today? About six or seven times we've seen Bowen on the mm -hmm. kickoff return. Personal foul against Notre Dame late on the play. Bowen, of course, ran back kicks at Georgia. He left SMU and in 87 ran kicks and punts back for Georgia and then came back to SMU as a walk-up. Well, a 15-yard penalty moving it out to the 40-yard line. Personal foul. It's the blue. First down. Holtz wants to know what the foul was. Army, a seven-point lead over Boston College at half. Duke, ten-point lead over North Carolina State, halftime. Ohio State, two-touchdown lead over Iowa, second quarter in a Big Ten matchup. Ohio State playing good football, second half of the year. They're looking at a, a good bowl bid as Kevin Love is upended by Troy Ridgely. 
for a loss. And West Virginia trails Rutgers by three in a big game for West Virginia. If they want to go to the bowl, they better come back. A lot of the bigger games starting a little bit later on this afternoon as we take a look at Forrest Gregg over on the sidelines. And let me tell you, folks, this team has won two football games. <laughs> they trailed by 43, but they beat, what, Connecticut 31-30 to and North Texas State 35-9. to They weren't expected to do that, Ted. And there's a pass from Romo to Wolf, and Wolf is out very close to the first down. They're a little bit shy at midfield. SMU is going to have third down and about a yard, just shy of the midfield line. You know, Forrest Gregg had to teach these players everything. There were no role models. But you know what they did when they beat North Texas? His players knew how to do one thing, the Gatorade bucket right on Forrest Gregg's head. <laughs> they knew how to do that, and he got a big shower on the sidelines two weeks ago. We're almost sneaking for the first down. Tell you they emulate everything the pros do. High school players and college players. Of course, they got the Gatorade thing from the New York Giants. Bill Parcells used to get dunked every win. Their first win this year, Mike Romo threw a touchdown pass on the last play. They beat Connecticut, scored 17 points in the last six minutes. Forrest Craig said it was the best win he's ever been associated uh, with. And this is a guy that's played in the Super Bowl and coached in the Super Bowl. He was never more emotional than that game. Well, it means a lot to him, SMU. And to have the opportunity to put it back where they belong, as he says. They're going to be back up on top, and I think you're seeing the beginning of it. This, as we said, that's about the third or fourth time that Mike Romo's had a hard time with the snap from Matt Weisenbaker. His third uh, fumbled snap from center. Lou Holtz doesn't think it's going to take Forrest Gregg that long. He thinks in two years, MU is going to have a chance to win the Southwest Conference. Romo with an incompletion on second and 12. Well, he's been pressured today. Notre Dame's defense forced him to throw off balance. This is not a, a real good passing day for Mike Romo. He's been hurried on more than five or six occasions today to throw Aaron passes. You saw that stat a little bit earlier. He's only thrown for 100 yards so far. Now, Romo's going against almost all freshmen and sophomores now in Notre Dame's defensive alignment. And he guns it down the field. And that's intercepted. DeLon Francisco still in the game. And he's got a lot of blocking. And finally running into Jason Wolf at the 25-yard line. Francisco is smelling six. That's he brought down. That's his fourth interception of the year, Ted. Wild Francisco. And that'll be it for him today. He'll get a a little break. 48-yard return on the interception. Francisco has been very good on his coverage all day long. I've been watching him, Ted. He's covered everybody very well defensively. Now he steps in front of a would-be completion. Had not been for Francisco. That would have been a nice game for SMU. And he brings it back 48 yards to SMU's 22-yard line. And the race is on. Rick Meyer is back in a quarterback. Ryan Mahalko and Dorsey Levins are the running backs. David Jandrick is in as a wideout. And Meyer just let the clock run. Meyer let the 30-second clock run intentionally. And Notre Dame takes the five-yard penalty. And so I think these are little, these little tidbits of little signals of first and 10, we wanted first and 15. Those are the little things that Lou Holtz, I'm sure, is sending messages to Forrest Craig. Yeah. Saw the Irish for first and 15 at the 27-yard line. And Mahalko runs it right over center and gets about three yards. Kenny Ray on the tackle. Tonight may 
just have a chance to sit back for a few moments before right. he starts worrying about Penn State and reflect on and savor this is wonderful yeah. winning streak. And the fact that since halftime of the Southern Cal game, this has been a dominant football team. It really has. Quite surprising what they did to Pittsburgh. I think that was our most surprising game. When you say so, Ted, Absolutely. we thought that was going to be a pretty close football game, and they just ran over Pitt. 300 yards rushing. And, and the way they manhandled SC's defensive team, you know, University of Southern California came in here leading the country against the rush. 36-yard average, and Notre Dame just got 250 against the They were the lucky to win that game. They right? really were, <laughs> boy, I'll tell you. <laughs> Two 80-yard drives in the fourth quarter, and they were lucky. Walter Boyd with that last carry, and the ball to the 18-yard line makes it third and six for Notre Dame. takes another intentional five-yard penalty, backs it up to the 23. I think this is the type of situation where Lewis wouldn't mind seeing running time. Yes. It also takes about 45 to 50 seconds extra off the clock before the ball is snapped. They reset it after the penalty and, and get a fresh clock. There it is down the corner, eight, nine, seven seconds. Third and 11, and Rusty Setzer gets the pitch. And he broke a couple of tackles, and Setzer got it down to the 15-yard line. Now you see why they took that five-yard penalty. And the officials also understanding what's happening here. Even though Setzer went out of bounds, they kept the clock running. That would have been a first down if they didn't take the five-yard penalty. That's right. So they got it to the 15-yard line on fourth down and three, and there's the clock continuing to move. Billy Hackett will come on to try and kick a 32-yard field goal. Jim Sexton is the holder, and Hackett boots it his second of the game. And so we'll take a timeout. Five minutes and 45 seconds remaining in the third quarter. And Billy Hackett's second field goal makes Notre Dame's lead now 52 to 6. Follow the Fighting Irish to sunny Miami. Sports Channel America and USA Today are giving away another tailgate weekend for two to the Notre Dame Miami game at the Orange Bowl, November 25th. Round trip airfare, hotel accommodation, tickets to the game, and a privately catered pregame tailgate meal. Send your name, address, and daytime phone number on a postcard to the address on the screen. Or check out the Sports Corner in USA Today, Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Early entries must be received by November 17th. Sports Channel America and USA Today want to send you to Miami. One of the great advantages of doing business with a firm like Schwab is that you're dealing with professionals across the whole country. They're creating financial advantages for the individual investor. Many companies reward their employees with stock options. That's why we offer an option financing service. It's flexible, convenient, and enables our customers to enjoy the full rewards they've earned. Our Schwab One account is a good example of how we give investors an edge. At other brokerage firms, it takes $20,000 to open an asset management account. At Schwab, it only takes $5,000. And we give daily interest on investment funds, check writing privileges, and a lot more. To me, one Schwab difference is very clear. Most brokers are good talkers. Schwab brokers are good listeners. For a free booklet describing Schwab services, call toll-free 800-841-0300. That's 800-841-0300. Live coverage of Notre Dame football on Sports Channel and tonight the National Hockey League on Sports Channel. A doubleheader. It begins live at 7.30 Eastern with the Blackhawks and the Islanders at the Nassau Coliseum. And following that, the Montreal Canadiens and the Los Angeles Kings at the Forum. Please check your local listings for the games available in your area. Dame 52 to 6 leaders and Craig Hendrick who's had a lot of workouts today on kicking off the Notre Dame kick coverage team doing a lot of work today as the Irish kick the field goal following Dewan Francisco's interception. Notre Dame now 
officially here halfway through the third quarter with 264 yards rushing. That's about their average on the year. 143 passing. 407 yards offense today. Well, Michael Bowen well down it in the end zone for SMU. Mustangs winning two games. You mentioned they really surprised, I think, everybody by two things. One, winning two games, and two is that they've stayed fairly healthy this year. A lot of people thought that uh, the competition level here, they just get banged up and lose too many people to injuries. Absolutely. Frank Jacobs, as we told you earlier, is the only one really has gone down with an injury. He broke his ankle against Air Force. Magala missed a game last week, but he's okay now. They've had the same starting offense and defense all year long up front with their linebackers, defensive linemen, offensive linemen. Romo to Bergfeld for a first down completion of seven yards. You know, it's amazing. You watch these quarterbacks throw today, Ted. They got gloves on. It's unbelievable how they can play with gloves on. And of course, I know they're a lot different kind of gloves. <laughs> we, we, we didn't, were didn't let you wear them. No, he was more like Bud Grant, you know. <laughs> Couldn't wear gloves anywhere. Little shot put pass there for a completion. Romo to Bergfeld again, and that's a first down for SMU. Keep that clock rolling. 35 Four yards. I'd like to see him get a real nice sustained drive going here and put together four or five first downs and stick it in the end zone to really give these young players a little confidence. First down, complete to Andy Bergfield. Here's Romo with a quick one, and that's dropped. Corey Beard trying to catch that ball as he was heading out of bounds on the far sideline, incomplete. Last night, Notre Dame basketball debuted on Sports Channel. Our 20-game schedule continues with the regular season opener, which is November 28th. Notre Dame hosting San Francisco. And you'll see it live at 7.30 Eastern on Sports Channel. Romo with a second and 10 play, 4.47 remaining in the third quarter. And his pass batted down at the line by Junior Bryant. Junior Bryant, a guy to really watch next year for Notre Dame. With Jeff Alm graduating, there's one hole open up front, and that young man, six foot five inch freshman from Omaha, may be the guy that steps in there. Well, Holtz likes this kid. He's quick. Thinks he can be able to put a lot of pressure on a quarterback. Romo on third down, and he's being pressured and sacked. Kevin McShane, a senior getting a chance to play, and I, I would have guessed is his first sack. Kevin McShane, first sack. In fact, that's the first sack of the day for Notre Dame. People, I guess it, it must be hard for many to understand the emotions, but for a young man who practices in Notre Dame for four years and never gets a chance to play, to even get one sack, something he can talk about the rest of his life. Steve Bell is the fair catch on the punt. And Notre Dame's had some seniors accomplish some firsts last week and this week. Four minutes and four seconds remaining in the third quarter. Notre Dame leading 52 to 6. As we pause now for a regional. Hi, this is Ray from Suburban Ford in Elgin. Over the past three years, you see me crush the prices, kick a touchdown, interview Elvis, even play a Santa Claus. And now I'm going to do something a little different. Magic. Watch these new luxury loaded 89 Mustangs disappear when I sell them for only 86.37. Right and prep included. Wow, this thing really works. Uh-oh. Visit Ron Hopkins Suburban Ford on Route 19 Irving Park Road in Elgin. As a businessman, do you demand excellence from the people you do business with? You want quality products, outstanding service, and professional people. That's why you chose Altoff for your commercial heating and air conditioning needs. As a homeowner, you expect nothing less. 
That's why Alltalk is the obvious choice for your home heating and air conditioning needs. Alltalk Industries, where excellence is never compromised. mural on the side of the Hesburgh Library that faces Notre Dame Stadium. On campus, it's affectionately known as Touchdown Jesus. Touchdown and Jesus. That's where a lot of the SMU players went yesterday to have their pictures taken. They were all carrying cameras and snapping each other's pictures, posing in front of the library yesterday. Part of the experience, of course, Greg wanted them all to have coming here to play a game. The tough part for Forrest Gregg is to find something that he can teach those young men about playing the actual game here. With Notre Dame leading big in the third quarter, and Rick Meyer, a sharp pass to Dorsey Levins. And that's a first down to the SMU 46. Levins, normally the tailback, flanked out on the left side, showing a little versatility there, giving Lou that option that this young man can catch the football as well from that position. Well, got a lot of good young kids that got a lot of ability, Ted, we're seeing it today. Can play two or three different spots offensively. A total yardage figure you saw there, meaningful for the Notre Dame defense. As Bellis runs up the middle, and Bellis inside the 40. SMU's in the top 10 in the country in passing offense. They've thrown the ball well over at least 150 yards in every game. And they average 271. You're absolutely right. They've averaged 271 yards passing per game. In this game, Notre Dame's defense has stopped them. And that is Kershaw, Brett Kershaw, who is down for SMU. A senior, and he is one of the other scholarship players that return to this team. He was a scholarship freshman in the 1986 SMU team. And he is down and hurt on the field right now. And we'll break with 3.23 remaining in the third quarter. Live on Sports Channel, you're watching Notre Dame football. The Bomb. Razzle Dazzle. Browns battle the Seahawks. Someday. Long after the game is over, NBC Sports is still on the line. Dial 1-900-226-8000 for NBC Scores Plus. 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Pool. Steve Miserak, the master. Pretty Boy Floyd, the hustler. Eva Mattia, the leading lady. Now come together to bring you the ultimate in pool instruction videos. Pool, the master's way. Steve Miserak, the master, and three-time world champion, reveals his secrets of eight ball, nine ball, and straight pool, and teaches you breaks, banks, angles, English, strategy, and more. Pretty Boy Floyd, the world's greatest hustler, shares with you his magic cue ball control with the masse, the jump, the power draw. Becoming world champion was no accident. I've learned from past masters. Now I'm going to teach you what they taught me but some secrets nobody knows but me. Take it from me, the Miz, the master. If you play pool, you must have this video. To order pool the master's way, use your credit card to call toll-free 1-800-841-0300. That's 1-800-841-0300. Or send $24.95 plus $350 shipping and handling to pool the master's way. P.O. Box 4670, Omaha, Nebraska, 68104. Fred Kershaw taken off, being treated on the sidelines as Notre Dame has the ball at the SMU 38-yard line, second and two. Clock running, late third quarter. Ted Robinson, Paul Horning with you here on Sports Channel. Rick Meyer, and he gives it to Ted McNamara. And McNamara gets first down yardage. Now near the 30, where Bruce Van Durbin brings him down. doing is keeping the ball in the middle of the field, keeping it in play, keep the clock moving. They got Jim Sexton in there, who does some punting, of course. He's playing flanker. And Meyer gives it inside to McNamara. You know what they're doing today? We're gonna, they're going to confuse us all day, Paul, all these double numbers. All right. all the double numbers today. 
Matt Johnson also in the game, and he's wearing the same number as Sexton. And, uh, I guess about a dozen players that have duplicate numbers today. 33 is a duplicate number. That's David Jandry checks in. He's a tight end. Chet Hollister also wears 33 today. So. Adrian Jarrell slotted right along with Jandrick, and the ball goes inside to McNamara, and he's inside the 25, and then are able to third down and short. You know, it's a great credit to these fans here. It's amazing. I've watched this for over 20, 30 years. Now, here's a game, 52 to 6. And this is a really a big difference between the college and the pro game. At 52 to 6, there's not a fan that left the stands. Nobody has gone home. In pro football, it'd be, I'll see you later. You know, if your, your team's getting beat by 46 points in the fourth quarter, uh, you know, this whole place would be empty. And it really is a difference. Fifteen different people have carried the football for Notre Dame today. And Rick Meyer's going to take another delay of game penalty on third and two. He lets the clock run down. There's a 25-second clock visible this year in all college football stadiums. And the Irish have taken three intentional penalties here in the third quarter. they're going to stay for the game but what's amazing is that here at Notre Dame Stadium they'll stay for 20 minutes after the game right. to listen to the band and sing the alma mater college football is best and Meyer gives it to Setzer and Setzer breaks outside and Rusty Setzer is he stepped steps out of bounds, out of bounds <laughs> intentionally at the 7 yard line all right you would have scored. Showed you a little class right there. Yep. And this man hasn't scored too many touchdowns on the year, folks. How about none? And Rusty Setzer shows me a little something here. Look at his straight arm here. Good running. Now watch him step out of bounds, a sophomore from Gary, Indiana. He knew he could score six right there. Adrian Jarrell was throwing that block at the goal line. So it is first and goal at the seven-yard line with 36 seconds remaining in the third quarter. We're going to take another five-yard penalty. Myers going to take another penalty to back it up. Students especially are booing, but again, this is, this is something within the coaching fraternity that maybe people don't understand. Play. Offense. But Lou Holtz, you know, it's funny, I asked him yesterday if he, if he felt he could do what Forrest Gregg is doing. Would he have the makeup to take a team like Forrest Gregg has, knowing you're going to lose, yep. be able to do it? Lou said, I did it. <laughs> but I lost some games in my life, and it is a hard thing to do. But he understands what Forrest Gregg is going through this year. And I tell you, I played with Forrest for 10 years. He's a very proud, he's a very proud coach. He's a proud is going to get it back. Holtz is going to be happy, and so is Forrest Craig. Nice big bounce right into Ron Hagen's hands. Well, Lou gave the offense enough shots to make a mistake. But I said, Forrest Craig is a very proud man. He doesn't like to go through a season like this, but you, you just got to gut it up. Do the best you can with a situation like this. A big hit by Demetrius Dubose on the pass that was thrown to Derwin Ware of SMU. A short game. His time will come. Seven fumbles today by Notre Dame. They've lost only three. And the third quarter now coming to an end at Notre Dame Stadium. The Irish adding ten points to their halftime lead in the third quarter. And after three, Notre Dame closing in on their school record winning streak, leading 52 to 6. And you're watching Notre Dame football on Sports Channel.
Introducing Minivac, the amazing miniature cleaning system designed to take on hundreds of chores no ordinary tools can handle. Minivac cleans away dust from camera lenses, computer keyboards, figurines, or stereo equipment. Minivac's powerful motor vacuums away dust and dirt. It comes with two wand attachments, two ultra-soft brush nozzles, and a reusable vacuum bag. Keep one in the car for cleaning along the dash, steering column, stereo, ashtrays, and seats. Minivac is perfect for removing dust and debris from pictures, models, and those impossible-to-reach crevices. In this special television offer, you get Minivac with all five attachments, plus convenient storage case for only $19.95. Here's how to order. Credit card and COD customers call toll-free 1-800-841-0300 or save COD fees by sending $19.95 plus $4 shipping and handling to Minivac, P.O. Box 4670, Omaha, Nebraska or call 1-800-841-0300. Watch out. Strap yourself in. The wildest show on wheels is about to roar into your living room. The United States Hot Rod Association brings you the ultimate home video. Sweat and gears. Bigfoot takes on the toughest full-blown competition ever. But then he faces his greatest test. It's man versus machine, with Sergeant Slaughter and his battle battalion challenge Bigfoot to an all-out tug of war. So if you want gear jamming, car crushing, down and dirty action, get ready for the video event of the year. Blood, sweat, and gears. Get your credit card ready and order your video now. To order your video, call 1-800-841-0300, toll free. 1-800-841-0300. For send check or money order to Truck Video, P.O. Box 4670, Omaha, Nebraska. But hurry, supplies are limited. Now the students seeing their team play for the final time this year at Notre Dame Stadium. And a salute during the quarter break. Many of the students will see the Irish in Miami when they play there over Thanksgiving break, and perhaps again in a bowl game. With the final quarter of the season beginning, Notre Dame leading 52 to 6. Lou Holtz has mentioned often this year he doesn't like to talk about repeating national championships. I just want to win again. That's all I want to do is win. Spent a lot of time during the offseason looking into how you do that. As Romo deals it over the middle and he bounces one in incomplete to Jason Wolf. Well, Romo had enough time to throw the football on target that time. He just hurried it a little bit, Ted. He was wide open for the first down. And so it's third and nine. During the offseason, Lou Holtz spoke personally to Bobby Knight and Bill Walsh about how you try to win again, how you coach after you've won a championship. Here's Romo throwing on third and nine, and Jason Wolf has it, and that is going to be right at the 15-yard line, which is where the first down marker is. So you should have it. Give it to him. <laughs> Also read John Wooden's book. He read Woody Hayes's book. Of course, Lou Holtz coached under Woody Hayes for a year at Ohio State. He felt fairly well prepared to come back and coach something he'd never done before, coaching a defending champion. Right. Well, I've always found what Lombardi taught us to be true, Ted. You know, the toughest thing is not getting to the top. The toughest thing is staying on top because everybody is really after you there at that time. There's a nice toss, Romo to Wolf, and another first down out across the 30. And we've seen four or five times this year as the football game Notre Dame was in some real knockdown, drag out affairs. Everybody who comes in here plays a little extra effort, not only to beat Notre Dame, now they're ranked number one. They're on top. Let's, not, let's knock the big guy off. It's as simple as that. And also one of the officials shaking up on the play. On the Notre Dame sidelines near Lou Holtz is a man who may be a head coach next year. You know, anytime he has success, you expect that assistant coaches are going to get their chance. And Notre Dame has a man who's mentioned frequently as a head coach in major college football. It's defensive coordinator Barry Alvarez. Right. And 
when you get that chance, you almost have to take it. You're going to move up. You're going to run your own program. You're going to be the boss. And I'll tell you one thing. could do a lot worse. What a great coach Barry Alvarez is. Flags down as they run a draw play here out to the 40-yard line with Stuart Ison, the carrier. think Wisconsin that's uh, where the rumors have been emanating about Barry Alvarez Barry Alvarez, Alvarez, Alvarez going to Wisconsin that's the rumors and boy I think that'd be a great choice for and Lou and Lou would be happy you know you hate to lose a coach of this caliber to his coaching staff be a big miss but uh, you know but he's got to be happy for his assistant coach he gets that opportunity because that's a really a, a nice pat on the back for the head coach that they think enough of your program what you've done here to take somebody on your staff and give them that chance to be a head coach you don't like to see another head coach lose his job no that's the flip side but if it does exactly. happen you want to see one of your people get their chance after the offside penalty against the irish defense it's first and five the swing pass to wolf who's now caught nine passes today Jason wolf this is a little surprise early. Maryland up on Penn State. That game being played in Baltimore today. And Pittsburgh and Miami score this first quarter. There's a huge game. And a big game for Pittsburgh. They also, if they could pull out an upset today there, could get to a New Year's Day ball. Oh, absolutely. And next week, no matter what happens to Penn State, please, they're going to get a chance to play the number one ranked team. And I'll tell you one thing, that's their whole season. That's going to be their whole season for Penn State. And there's some jumping in Moving on the line of scrimmage there, and we'll see how they unravel this. Uh, when I say whole season, of course, they got Pittsburgh coming up after that. But it will mean a great deal for Penn State to be able to knock off the number one ranked team at home. Five yards against SMU here. With 11 and a half minutes remaining, and they're moving the clock. And on these dead ball fouls, they're keeping the clock moving here in the fourth quarter. Here's Romo throwing it to Gleber on the far side, and Mitchell Gleber is to the 40-yard line. Now the clock gets stopped as he's pushed out of bounds by Rod Smith. SMU couldn't figure to win another game this year. They got their two, and they had following this game, they still have Texas Tech and Arkansas, so they, and they are expected by most to finish up the season with those two wins. But still, that's two more than most people felt. Exactly. Romo dumping it up. Hey, got it over the linebackers, and it's caught by Michael Bowen. That's across the Notre Dame 45. and Demetrius Defoe's on the tackle for the Irish. You see he's throwing off balance a little bit. He's thrown off with the wrong foot, but he still gets got enough touch on the football to get it on target. He doesn't set too much, Ted, and throw the football with too much balance most of the time. That one tipped at the line by Junior Bryant and still complete inside the 40. 20. 25 now, Ted, out of 44 for 175 yards. Romo could not have his letter of intent when he went to SMU, could not be signed in his own house. The SMU coaches were not allowed, part of the death penalty, they were not allowed to go to his house. Romo had to drive on his own from San Antonio to Dallas and sit outside Forrest Gregg's office and wait for an appointed hour to sign his letter of intent. Another screen out here to Ison, and he has hit for a loss. Isn't that something? Unbelievable. This place is going crazy. I guarantee all way. Yeah, the students worked for about a quarter trying to get the, everybody else to do a wave, and they succeeded. That's the most noise that Notre Dame Stadium has heard today. throwing it out, and Bowen can't hang on. Ball thrown behind him. And the incompletion will leave SMU with third and four, and 9.21 remaining. Well, at 52 to 6, the fans want to get their own action going, and I'm not jacking on the field as far as they're concerned. They got this whole thing going crazy. 
It's loud. Mitchell, uh, Michael Bowen is in motion. And Romo's quick toss, and there's a nice grab for a first down by Gleaver. Oh, good catch by Gleaver that time. He had to reach back, make a one-handed catch, left-handed. Mitchell Gleaver. Senior from Richardson, Texas, just north of Dallas. And it's a first down for SMU at the Notre Dame 30. Caught at the 15, 16 yard line. And that's caught by Michael Bowen, George Foreman on the tackle for Notre Dame. Ted Robinson, Paul Horning at Notre Dame Stadium with 740 remaining. SMU on a drive here with a first down at the Notre Dame 16. They've done this against many of Notre Dame's young defenders, but of course a young offensive team as well for the Mustangs. And they've used the short passing game well here as Romo throwing for the end zone. His man out there, but he got turned the wrong way. And Jason Wolf could not grab it. So an incompletion leaving SMU with second down and 10. Mentioned earlier, Jason Wolf, one of the key recruits for Horace Gregg, got him out of Birmingham, Michigan. Almost all of the Mustang players are from the state of Texas. 74 of their roster players from Texas. Romo with second and 10 at the 16, 7.23 remaining. Pressure throws his 50th pass of the day, and he throws it out of bounds in the end zone. Intended for a walk. Romo now 28 out of 50, 196 yards. He'll have a chance to finish and should really finish third on the SMU all-time season passing list at the end of this freshman year. Mustangs take a timeout with 7.13 remaining. Mike Romo calling a timeout. Notre Dame leading 52 to 6. And we'll pause now for a regional break. You're watching Notre Dame football live on Sports Channel. What do you mean it's no big deal? Master Care Car Service. The, a wheel alignment. I've been there. They're alignment specialists. You want computers? Master Care is state of the art. Yeah, I want it to last. It's no big deal. Six months or 6,000 mile warranty. Now, what else do you want? My car to stop changing lanes by itself. No problem. No big deal. With over 50 Firestone Master Care service centers in Chicagoland, finding one near you is no big deal. Master Care Car Service by Firestone. Win big in the Gas City $300,000 Pro Football Challenge. Pick the winners. Best one and lost record wins the $10,000 cash weekly prize. Test your pro football knowledge every week. The 16 weekly winners go for the $100,000 Gas City Playoff Grand Prize. Fun! Man, hundred, man, sixty-three. Pick. Win $10,000 cash each week in the Gas City $300,000 Pro Football Challenge. Man, hundred, man, sixty-three. Pick. Well, the Notre Dame home season is over, but two tough road games remain, and Sports Channel will be there for both next week. Penn State at University Park, Pennsylvania, and you'll see its same-day coverage at midnight Eastern next Saturday. And the replay Sunday morning at 10 Eastern. And Sports Channel America continues its coverage of Notre Dame football. And on what has been for November, a rather seasonable day in South Bend, SMU after the timeout trying to throw a reverse screen. Romo to Wolf, and Notre Dame smelled that out. And Eric Jones broke it up. 
It's headed for Wolf and Eric Jones, who's just 225 pounds, but being turned into a defensive lineman by the Irish. Freshman from Portage, Indiana. Made the play, and Romo looking for the play. This will be the 16th play of the SMU drive, and all the first 15 of all the passes. And now Romo, the plays are coming from the booth upstairs down to Forrest Gregg and then sent in, and there's some confusion again, so Romo takes another timeout. With 7.04 remaining. So we'll break SMU trying to get in the end zone, taking two timeouts as they hope to get there for the second time in the game. If you want to see the movie Cocktail on TV this fall, Showtime has it. HBO doesn't. Showtime also has Dirty Rotten Scoundrels. HBO doesn't. Showtime has Red Heat. My stepmother is an alien. HBO doesn't. The fact is, only Showtime has exclusive rights to these and lots of other top box office hits. Showtime exclusives. Here you see them, there you don't. Gleason, you have so many dealerships now, even I've lost track of them. Tell the people where they are. Gleason, the Chevrolet store is on Roosevelt Road in Forest Park. The Ford store is on Milwaukee Avenue in Niles. And, and then there's the Dodge Jeep Eagle store out in my neighborhood on the south side, Southwestern Avenue. Thank you, Gleason. And thank you, Gleason. No matter where you live, there's a Jerry Gleason dealership near you. leading 52 to 6 in the fourth quarter. Paul Horning has gone down to the sidelines and he'll be talking with Lou Holtz immediately after the game. We'll call I down there, Paul. Can you hear me down here? I'm down on the sidelines and I can tell you one reason that nobody has left this stadium. They're waiting to give the seniors their just due when this football game's over with. And nobody's going to leave the stadium when this game's over with either. Now the Notre Dame defender fell and then Derwin Ware could not catch the pass, which would have been a touchdown. Sean Davis slipping and falling down for Notre Dame. And so on fourth down, the Mustangs misfire and turn it over. But they held the ball for eight and a half minutes on that drive. And they moved it 77 yards only to come away with nothing. Well, Paul, things have certainly changed for Notre Dame. You know, this SMU has become the third team this year to throw the ball 50 times against the Irish. Well, I think we saw it early on with Stanford, Steve Smith. How many times he threw it? 69 times, broke an all-time Stanford record, completed 39 of them. And Mike Romo, I think this will be a terrific learning experience for not only Romo, but all the SMU teams. 52 passes in the game for Romo. Here's Levins outside, and Dorsey Levins. Right, hard running. Again, he, you know, a different type of runner. He doesn't have that explosive speed, but he runs hard. Tough to bring down, and he gets it all the way out to the 46. <laughs> you know, Paul, we're used to watching Waters and Ismail about that explosive speed, and Dorsey Levins is a different type of runner, isn't he? Strong runner. I tell you, he came by me. I, I tell you, it's a little bit different down here, Ted. He looked like he's pretty quick to me, but he zoomed by me. Now, Levins has only carried the ball six times and has 59 yards today. Six and a half minutes to play, and the Irish have it at their 46 with Peter Graham at quarterback. And Ryan Alco getting the call as the fullback, and he's to the midfield line. on the tackle for SMU. First team defenders still in there for the Mustangs who are getting a real workout today. 
course, Craig said it's going to take him a lot longer to build his defense, especially defensive linemen. He said that's the toughest position to find now or to get, especially for SMU, to find top quality, tough defensive linemen. Pete Graham on second down, pitching on the option to Steve Bellis. And that's about a three-yard game. Richie Butler, Ron Hagan on the tackle. So with five and a half minutes remaining, Notre Dame has third and three at the SMU 47. Thanks to our spotter for all our Notre Dame home games this year, Peter Tolshinsky. And stats today being kept by Notre Dame alum and a Notre Dame legend in Tim Burrett. Here's Graham throwing the ball to freshman Adrian Gerald, and that's a first down at the 39. I'd also like to thank from SMU, very fine athletic director Doug Single, and Coach Forrest Craig and their sports information director Ed Wisneski, and for Notre Dame athletic director Dick Rosenthal, associate athletic director Roger Baldessari, Coach Lou Holtz, and sports information director John Heisler. down for the Irish at the SMU 39. And Meyer on a busted play, I believe. Going to lob one out. Mahalko is wide open. And Mahalko is at the five-yard line. That looked like a broken play to you, Paul. Well, I'm way down at the other end, Ted. And it was just a little flat pass to Mahalko. Looked like he cut back back here. Now, question is, will he score? Was he going to take a penalty here? <laughs> That's, they've done this, I think, four times now in the half. They've taken intentional delay of game penalties to prevent from scoring. 33-yard pass there from Meyer to Mahalko. And Notre Dame has 567 yards of offense in the game. That is their season high. And they do run the play here and into the line for a short game. Goes Rod West. Rod West, who has been shuttled back and forth between tight end and fullback this year. Now, now Ted, this may be another senior uh, gift here. Rod West is in there. They might want to let Rod West score his first touchdown, the senior from New Orleans, number 43. Might be it here. He's lining up again as the well. He's lining up with a pro set here with Dorsey Levins. Second and goal at the one, and it is West, and he's in for the Notre Dame touchdown. So Rob West from New Orleans, Louisiana, scores his first Notre Dame touchdown, and it has indeed been Senior Day today. He almost, he almost didn't have that football going in. A little trouble grabbing the handoff from Meyer. So with 3.22 remaining, West scoring. And Craig Hendrick, the extra point. The kickers have split the duties themselves here today. Hendrick is taking the extra points and Hackett the field goals. So Notre Dame leads now 59-6 as we pause for a regional break. Sports Channel. This is Notre Dame Football. Get a glimpse of your future today at Old Orchard Chevy World in Skokie. We have a fine selection of 89s at huge discounts. We're offering rebates up to $12.50 or financing as low as $6.9 on 89s and 90s. Introducing the 90s Chevrolets and Geos. The new Geo Tracker, Prisms, Geo Storm, ZR1 Corvettes, and Lumen APV vans. So get a glimpse of your future today at Old Orchard Chevy World. Expect the finest, and often you'll get it. Howard Frum Jewelers is Chicago's most respected jeweler for diamonds, gold, vintage wrist watches, Rolex, other fine watches, and jewelry for those special occasions. Visit Howard Frum Jewelers for a free appraisal of your watch or fine jewelry and receive the highest possible payment for your valuables. Expect the finest and find it in the service, the selection, and the quality at Howard Frum Jewelers. 8th floor, 5 South Wabash, Chicago. Yeah, the best workout 
today is for the Leprechaun. It was a push-up for every point. And uh, it's been a busy day for him. Notre Dame leading handily. And tonight on Sports Channel, NHL Hockey continues. A good doubleheader. First from Long Island, the Blackhawks and the Islanders at 7.30 Eastern. And then from Los Angeles, the Canadiens and the Kings. A doubleheader of NHL Hockey. Check your Sports Channel listings to see which games are available in your area. Craig Hendrick booting it off for the Irish. And Michael Bowen, another kick run back. And again is through the first wave and out near the 35. Notre Dame with 572 yards of offense today. And SMU for the season has allowed an average of about 540 yards of offense. So again, not an awful lot that's happened today has been surprising. And the Notre Dame first teamers have not played much. In fact, less than they did last week against Navy. And another 10 win season for Notre Dame in 3 minutes and 14 seconds. And now Casey Kleiss is in a quarterback for SMU. And he dumps the ball out. I want to comment about Rungy the 22 Hill. game winning streak. That right? You said well, Rondi Hill gets catching the pass out of the backfield and he is to the 38 yard line. Paul Horning will have a chance to talk with Lou Holtz at the conclusion of this game. I think Lou probably feels like he earned a couple of these relaxing weeks. After an incredibly tough schedule early in the year for Notre Dame. Kleist throwing a bullet in there that's caught by Andy Bergfeld at the 46-yard line. And all the folks are still staying around. And I would imagine that sideline, you're down there pretty close to it. Seniors have to be pretty happy. We've all gotten a chance to play today. First down at the 46 for SMU. Casey Kleiss slotting one long for Bergfeld, and it is tipped and broken up. Nice play there by Chet Hollister. A defensive back for the Irish to break up a long pass. Casey Kleiss, a redshirt freshman quarterback from Dallas. It now is the signal caller for the Mustangs. Two twenty-three remaining in the home finale at Notre Dame Stadium. And Junior Bryant almost jumped off. He got back, and the handoff is for virtually nothing inside. Brian Rattigan the tackle and the ball carrier was Omar Thompson from Wichita Falls, Texas. And there have not been many running plays today for SMU. Only 12 rushing plays in the game. Ted, all the players are down here mugging, taking pictures on the sidelines. They're quite loose right now, and I know that they're happy to be a part of this. 22 game winning streak. Longest in the history. Incomplete with a minute one to go. Well, you can't say it enough, Paul, is to look at in the entire scheme of the history of this school that this team has accomplished something that no one else has. Exactly. And I'm going to ask Holtz that immediately after this football game. And you know, he's quoted, been quoted many times. He's talked to us about it. He doesn't like to talk about the winning streak. They don't talk about it during the week. But you almost have to stop and savor this 22-game winning streak. Fourth and nine, and there's an interception for Doug DiOrio. Another player that we have never seen before. A walk-on getting a chance to play, and Doug DiOrio with an interception for another day. See the direction. That's another part of the game that's so great. 
the scout team players getting the cheers from the first team players. 53 seconds remaining Program gone in Notre Dame's win. Individuals performing together, listening, arranging, building. At Northwest, our performance is helping you do business, getting you wherever you need to go on time, creating new ways to make things work for you, because our job is helping you do yours. Fighting Irish to sunny Miami. Sports Channel America and USA Today are giving away another tailgate weekend for two to the Notre Dame Miami game at the Orange Bowl, November 25th. Round trip airfare, hotel accommodation, tickets to the game, and a privately catered pregame tailgate meal. Send your name, address, and daytime phone number on a postcard to the address on the screen, or check out the Sports Corner in USA Today Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Early entries must be received by November 17th. Sports Channel America and USA Today want to send you to Miami. Sports Channel presents the hot shots of the collegiate circuit. Feel the power and excitement of men's college basketball. Our coverage is highlighted by 20 appearances of the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. Eight run-and-gun shootouts with the running rebels of UNLV. The Atlantic 10 Conference Game of the Week, plus appearances by UCLA, Temple, Florida, defending national champion Michigan, and much more. You'll be slamming and jamming with sizzling college basketball on Sports Channel. There are definitely traditions that never die at Notre Dame. Doug DiOrio getting a football for the mantelpiece at the interception, and now with 53 seconds remaining, Steve Bellis takes over again as the quarterback. <laughs> he tries to reverse his field, and he'll get a couple of yards on the play. And Notre Dame will have to run up one more play. And then we'll hear from Paul Horning and Lou Holtz. Ricky Waters, the leading ground gainer today for Notre Dame. Seven carries for 69 yards. Rocket Ismail caught four passes for 65 yards. And Tony Rice's final numbers today, five of eight for 84 yards passing and seven carries for 40 yards on the ground. And that should be the final play of the home season. And Rusty Setzer going down, and that should do it. We're going to go out on the field. And so Lou Holtz will walk across to shake hands with Forrest Craig. And Lou Holtz is in the Notre Dame record books as the coach of a team that has accumulated the longest winning streak in the great history of this school. 22 consecutive wins, 10 of them on the road, 7 of them, 7 of the 22 wins over teams ranked in the top 10. All right. 20 or you got a while. Cut but me in and out. Top 10 opponents have been defeated by Notre Dame during this winning streak.